Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. This tutorial is going to be about installing the Deepin desktop environment in Arch Linux. I've been covering almost all desktop environment in Arch Linux. This is going to be probably the last one for a while. This was requested already some time ago and I'm sorry it took so long. So without further ado, let's get going. So here we go, let's get started in installing the Deepin desktop environment. If you followed one of the previous tutorial on the base install of Arch Linux, we can go ahead now and it enter to start the system. It's going to take a moment to boot up. And we can log in here with the username and the password. And I know for some of you these fonts are a little bit too small, so I'm just going to increase them here in the console so that you can see better what I'm doing. To do this, I'm going to install a font called Terminus. So I will type in sudo pacman dash s yy to refresh also the servers and the package is terminus dash font and hit enter enter my pseudo passwords and hit enter and proceed with installation there you go now i can set the font in the console so i can type in set font and then ter dash 132n that's the point number i want to choose for this font and hit enter and now the fonts are bigger and you can see better so let's clean up the terminal and proceed now with our installation. So what we need to do here, we need to install the graphics drivers. We need to install the display server, our display manager, and the desktop environment. So let's get going. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. And the first package we can install is the graphic driver. So if you have an Intel card, you can install xf86-video-intel. If you have an AMD card, you can replace here Intel with AMD GPU. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you can replace here the whole thing with NVIDIA and also NVIDIA-Utils. Now, this is going to work for most NVIDIA cards. However, if you have a card which is from 2010 or older, you might need to install some drivers from the AUR. And I will leave a link to this in the video description below. So let me delete this package because I'm on a VM. So what I need to install is xf86-video-vmware. And now we can install our display server, so xorg. And we need to install also a display manager. However, for the deep in desktop environment, the display manager, which is LightDM, it's already included in the desktop environment packages. So let's go ahead and install those. The first one is the deep in package. And to have a more complete desktop environment, we can install also deepin-extra. And we can install also a browser, so in my case, Chromium. And we could go ahead and install also an Office Suite, but I'm going to leave it as it is in this case, and then we can just hit enter. Now we can accept the defaults here, also for the second group, and for the third one, and also for this one. And now we can proceed with the installation by hitting enter. Note that the installation size is around 2.5 gigabytes, so we can hit enter here to proceed with the installation. Now, this is going to take a moment to download and install, and I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the packages are installed, and we can clean up the terminal. And before we proceed here, we need to modify one file, which is the LightEM configuration file, as we need to define the greeter that we want to use with the display manager. So to do this, we can type in sudo vim slash etsy slash lighttm slash lighttm.conf and hit enter. And we need to scroll down here to the seed group. I'm scrolling down with control F. And you can see the seed group here. So what we are looking for is the greeter session. So right now we need to go here and delete the hashtag to activate this option and replace here the string with the deep in light DM greeter. So I'm just going to delete this line and enter here light DM dash deep in dash greeter. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change also the display script. You probably don't need to do this, but because I'm on a VM, I need to change this. Otherwise, the resolution of the display manager will not be correct. So let me scroll down here until I find the display setup script, which is right here. And I'm going to first uncomment this line by deleting again the hashtag and enter in this script. X render and then dash dash output virtual one. This is the name of my monitor. You can find out the name of your monitor by typing xrunner in your terminal. And then dash dash mode to define the mode. So in my case is 1920 per 1080. Then we can save the file and exit Vim. Clean up the terminal. 
And now we need to activate the display manager by typing in sudo systemctl enable light dm and hit enter. And there you go. Now we are ready to reboot the machine. So let's type in reboot and hit enter. It's going to take a second to do that. So here is Grab, our bootloader, so let's just hit enter here on Arch Linux. And if everything went well, we will be greeted by LightDM. And so here we are. This is the LightDM greeter from the deep in desktop environment. So I'm just going to type in my passwords and hit enter. And the first thing here, as you can see, I'm asked whether I want to use effect mode or normal mode. So depending on your computer, effect mode is going to provide you with a little bit more candies for the eyes, like transparency and so on, while normal mode is more geared toward performance and it will have therefore less animations. In my case, I'm going to go here for effect mode just to show you how it looks like. And as you can see here, I have a white background and the resolution is not correct. So we're going to change this in a second. It's possible you will see an image here. This is an issue probably with the graphic driver in the VM, but I'm going to change this in a second. So let me right click here on the desktop and go to display settings. And I'm going to choose here from the list my resolution and then click save. And there you go. Now I'm going to right click again on the desktop and go to wallpaper and screensaver. And I'm going to choose a wallpaper here. I'm going to go for this one. There you go. And here we have our Deepin desktop environment. So let's have a quick tour of the Deepin desktop environment. We have here the taskbar with our menus. When we click here on the launcher, we get a dashboard view here of the programs installed in our computer. We can change this, of course, by clicking on this icon here. And we're going to go into a tab mode where we have the categories here on top and the applications in it. We can also search, of course, for applications here. Let's go back to dashboard here and we also have this button here and when we click this we basically have a smaller menu. So it's really up to you how you want to use this. I like to have it actually this way. It takes out a little bit less space on my display if I need to search for my applications. We have also a display desktop button here and a multitasking view when you have multiple open windows. In the middle here, we have a kind of dock with the file manager. We have also our software for photo management, for music, our calendar and the settings. And we have the tray here with volume control, network management. We can also contract these icons here and expanding them. We have also our notifications here, our clock and our power menu. And at the end, we have also our trash. So let's have a look at the settings. Let's pull up the settings here. And as you can see here, it has a tab view. However, when we click on one, for example, let's click on personalization. We have then the categories here on the left side and the category itself that you want to work on here on the center. Let me increase the other side of the window a little bit so that you can see better. There you go. So right now under personalization here, we can choose the look and feel of our deep in desktop environment. Right now we have a light theme as you can see also here the taskbar is light we can go to automatic or we can also choose the dark one if you like these colors i'm going to go back to light here because it's easier to see we can choose also a different accent color from the ones available and we can turn on and off here our windows effect and also change the transparency under the icon theme here we can choose between several icons right now we have the bloom icons installed but we could choose for example to go with the papyrus icons and as you may know by now, these are my favorite icons, but I'm going to go back here to the bloom icons to the default. And we can choose also a cursor theme. There are already some available here and also our fonts. Now under accounts, we can change, of course, our accounts and add some new ones. I'm going to change here, for example, my name and I'll put in my name here. There you go. And we can choose also to make an auto login here or login without password, but I don't need to do this. On the display here, we can choose, of course, the resolution, the brightness, the scaling, which is nice to have, the refresh rate, and we have also some settings for the touchscreen. Now, I don't have one here to test on, but if you have one, you can go ahead here and test it for yourself. Under default applications here, we can see what applications are set by default. So we have for the internet Chromium, this is the only browser I installed. For Mail, we have nothing. We need to install something in here. For the text, we have a text editor and Vim. Right now, the text editor is default. Under music here, we have several choices, but the music program here from Deepin is already selected. And we have the same things for video, pictures, and also the terminal. Under network here, we can change, of course, our network settings. We can also configure VPN if you want to do that. 
And under notifications here, we can choose the notification for our applications. We have the control here for our sound system where we can control also the sound effects in the desktop environment. We have also date and time, the power menu, keyboard options, and the system information. We have a last setting here called general settings. So what this does basically, it's gonna modify some things in our Grub bootloader. So right now there is a startup delay and that is what is going to allow us to see the Grub bootloader when we boot the machine. We can also theme the bootloader by switching on this option here. And for this, we need to enter our sudo password. And this is going to be the team that we are going to be seeing when we boot up our machine. Now let's close this up and open up the file manager. So this is the file manager. It has a nice overview of your computer here with its disks and the folders available. We have also some options here in the file manager. If you click on these three lines here, we can choose to open a new window to connect to a server, to set a shared password, to code with settings, and also the theme. We can also change the theme from here. Right now, a system theme because we are using a system-wide light theme, but we can choose this to dark, for example. And this is how it's going to look like. So just the file manager will stay dark and the rest of the system will stay light. So I'm going to go back here to the light theme and go under settings one more time. And these are the settings for the file manager. So we can check here the basic behavior, how you want to open files, what tab you want to open, and so on. And we have also some other options here that you can explore about hidden files and the index preview mount dialog and others. So we can close this up and close also this window. And let's open up here our menu and have a look at this launcher here. On the left side here, we have some shortcuts. For example, here we have the computer. So if you click here, you're going to go back to the file manager. Let's close this up. If we click the second one here, this is our documents folder. So if we click on this, we're going to go directly to our documents. And the same goes for the other icons. So we have photos, music, videos, and downloads. So here we have a list of the programs available in our computer. And if you want to scroll through categories here, we can click on all categories and check them one by one. So it's fairly simple and fairly light. We have also here an option to power off or lock the computer or also our settings again. Now let's right click again on the desktop and go to wallpaper and screensaver. And you can see here we have several options. So let's scroll, for example, one more time here with the right arrow. And let's say that I want to choose this wallpaper here. And you can see it asks me if I want to choose only for the desktop or also for the lock screen. And if I don't say anything, it's going to do it for both. So in my case, this is fine. And I'm going to let it as it is. And the wallpaper is applied immediately. And let's right click again and go to wallpaper and screen saver. And if we go to screen saver here, we have also several screen savers available to us. So we can choose the one you like. For example, I'm going to go with this one, kind of a space thingy here. You can choose also after how long the screen saver is going to kick in if you're not using your computer. And let's right click also here on our taskbar. So if we go under mode here, we have fashion mode or efficient mode. So fashion mode, as you can see, it elevates the panel slightly above the bottom of the screen and it has a more kind of a modern look. If we go to efficient mode here, it looks more like a standard taskbar and the programs are moved all here to the left. So it's really up to you, the one you want to use. I'm going to right click again and go back to fashion mode. We can click also location. Right now it's on the bottom, but you can have it in another position if you like to do that. We have also status. We can keep shown, keep hidden or smart hide. Depending if you have windows overlapping on this, it will hide automatically. And we have also at the end, the plugins. So if you don't want some of these things here on the right side, you can check them off in this menu here. So for example, I don't want to have this on board here, so I can click this off and the icon disappears. So let's go back here to the launcher, go to categories here and internet and boot up our Chromium browser. And there we have it. We can expand its window. You can see what happens here if we have the panel in fashion mode. It's kind of a having a space here around the borders. So if you don't like this, I'm going to go back actually to the efficient mode as I like it better as well. And we can get rid of this bar here on top by clicking on the three dots here, go to settings and appearance and check off use system title bar and borders. And there you go. 
So all in all, the deep in desktop environment actually changed quite a bit since the last time I tried it out. I wasn't so thrilled the first time I tried it, but it has improved and it's actually also quite fast. So if you want to have a kind of different spin on Arch Linux, the deep in desktop environment is definitely worth a try. Now, there is still something I need to point out. If you look at the Arch Wiki, to which I will leave the link in the video description below, it's possible that there are still some security vulnerabilities in the deep in desktop environment. According to the Wiki, some time ago, developers of the OpenSUSE distribution actually reported to the deep in developers about the security bugs. And it seems to be that developers now responded and fixed some of these bugs, but it is still unclear if all the bugs have been fixed. So just a word of caution there, always have a look at the Arch Wiki if you're concerned about this to see the latest updates. So this is how you can install the Deepin desktop environment on Arch Linux. As I mentioned in the video, Deepin actually improved quite a lot since the last time I tried it out and it really performs very well. Again, make sure that you check the Arch Linux wiki regularly to check about those security vulnerabilities. I hope you liked the video guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.